I'm very thankful to the organizers of this conference for inviting me for the opportunity to discuss new strategies in the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer, NSLC. If we look at the traditional approach in onco in, to oncology that has existed for decades, it turned out uh, that in our speciality, we have the low response to the standardized therapy. Analgetics are uh, uh, useful in 90% of cases. Antiarrhythmic drugs, 60% in cases. And oncology rates at the bottom. Without our personalization, without individualization, our, our Drugs turn out, turn, out, turn, turn out to be in infectious. Our goal is to increase effectiveness via their customization of therapy and development of new strategy. As to the NSLC, uh, personalization is built uh, taking into account histology, clinical science, and molecular dis uh, genetic disturbances. We used to have the approaches uh, as to the algorithm of the first line therapy, non-spread, uh, non-squamous uh, lung cancer. Uh, we identified the drivers of mut mutations, and if the mutation is identified, we select the therapy. If there is no mutation, we decided whether or not to uh, administer bevacizumab or include platinum. Uh, uh, then we decide whether or not uh, the main maintenance therapy is needed and the salvage therapy or the two second line therapy. And all recommendations, usually participation in the clinical trials. But um, sometimes uh, quite rare we have the clinical trial. Uh, we, our arsenal has been enriched last year, and even uh, the second line therapy drugs to treat the NSLC. We had nindatamab that increased uh, the survival median, a very high figure, 12.6 months, and ramucirumab together with doxetaxel uh, in sh uh, have the 10.5 month median of, median of survival. And we approved the second life therapy to uh, treat NSLC. The target therapy, a great deal of driver mutations. Uh, they are typical of uh, the squamous cell and non-small cell lung cancer, but it turned out that the prevailing majority of the European patients, they don't have now biomarkers suitable for individualization of therapy. These are gray areas. The majority of the markers that are identified, these patients can't in real clinical practice receive uh, a target therapy due to the rare mutation. It's uh, the topic for further scientific studies. As to immunotherapy, quite long ago it was shown out that non-small lung cell cancer is a very prospective, very prospective for different immunotherapy. The infiltration of the tumor uh, cytotoxic lymphocytes correlated with the disease-free survival and the uh, prognosis. T-regulating uh, cells of FOX3 positive, they are suppressing immune uh, response cells. Uh, these tumors correlated with unfavorable forecast of survival rate of patients with non-small lung cell cancer. Why oncologists uh, have uh, the interest to immune therapy, like a phoenix bird uh, that is uh, reincarnated? Uh, these we can see the survival curves as to the target therapy. Usually we have the pluses in the medial, 
median of survival, but sooner or later these curves uh, they come together. As to immunotherapy on the left, for very long no time, no differences in median of survival. But starting from certain point, the curve of survival that receive immunotherapy comes to the plateau and uh, stays there uh, in plateau for a long time. It means that the certain amount of patients, 20 or 30 percent, they have uh, they benefit for a long time for from this immunotherapy. It's a kind uh, kind of. Uh, healthy condition. We introduce uh, the uh, immune editing as the benefit, as the merit for patient, but this uh, concept has profoundly changed our understanding of the immune function in uh, origin and development of cancer. Currently, we have been uh, talking about three stages uh, of immune system response. That's the first stage is elimination. That's the immune monitoring of a tumor, immune activation, the uh, work of effective immune cells, and sometimes they can uh, prevent the growth of tumor or even its elimination. The second stage of immune system activity is uh, equilibrium stage, when the tumor starts to avoid the um, immune system impact. This stage can be called the sleeping cancer. Uh, this uh, stage is characterized uh, with genetic instability, heterogeneous nature of a lesion and immune selection. And that's when the uh, last um, uh, stage sets off the escalation, when the tumor uh, grows uh, dramatically. The escalation or evasion of a tumor from the uh, immune systems is uh, influenced by the surrounding, the dendrite cells, the effector cells, uh, and cytosines, uh, fibroblastoma, and uh, histocompatibility cells, as many others, play a major role here. So our priority for immune therapy is to activate the active signals and block the blocking signals or inhibitor signals. Building upon this priority, we have developed a number of immune therapy for, uh, for lung cancer. These are passive and active immune therapies. Active include the antigen dependable or antigen independable therapies, and the later is the point of my presentation. The anti independable is aimed at the control point of the immune response. Let's go back to the theory. These are the key effector sellers. These are killers, T helpers, and the most important population. See the eight uh, effector T lymphocytes that destroy uh, tumor cells, perforin, graphene, and some other proteins are key players here. Let's consider the uh, schematic phases or the first stage of T cell immune response. The first is the uh, release of uh, tumor associated antigen, its capture by dendrite cell and its protesting, further protesting by the dendrite cell to submit it to the T lymphocyte. At the second stage, the dendrite cell transmits information and about the tumor associated antigen to naive T lymphocyte. At this stage, 
CTL4 play a major role in information transmission to the T lymphocyte. But I'm not going to talk about this mechanism today. Activated T lymphocyte returns back to tumor and uh, must uh, recognize the associated antigen, release uh, enzymes, and induce the uh, death of tumor cells. Here we talk about two types of phenocyte, the non-inflammatory phenocyte. Here I'd like to say that in the English language, inflammatory means completely different thing. In the English language, uh, non-inflammatory uh, inflammatory means any types of infiltration. Uh, in Russian language, uh, inflammatory means uh, related to any inflammation of a human body. Why do we talk about non-inflammatory um, type here? Because the uh, problem took place somewhere earlier on the way. For example, the tumor had a disguise or there was the uh, dendrite cell deficiency, there was the suppression of uh, cytogenes and so on. So we should start with immune, we should define ways for immune therapy at the earlier stages. And there is the second type with the uh, inflammatory processes, with the lymphoid phenotype. Let's look at the uh, T lymphocyte that go to the tumors, but they cannot destroy it because we have negative immune regulator effective. And one of the um, key players here are T lymphocyte receptors. T lymphocytes have a great bulk of receptors. I've, uh, I show you here only some of them. They are the activator and the uh, suppressor type of uh, receptors. Today we will talk about the PD-1 receptor or the receptor of the program death that suppresses the function of activated lymphocyte. This receptor has a huge role to play in normal human functioning because uh, this receptor recognizes uh, receptors of normal cells and helps to block autoimmune reaction in a healthy human body and prevents healthy uh, cell damage, for example, during inflammatory processes. What happens to tumor when we have that? The dendritic uh, cell gave information to NAVE uh, T cell and uh, activator T cell approaches tumor cell. TCR recognizes MHC based upon the high stack compatibility process. That's the. That's why the lack of high stack compatibility is the main evasion method for tumor cells, which is a common case, which is uh, which takes place in 50% with breast cancer. So tumor cells learns how to protect the lymphocytes, and uh, it has special PDL1 and PDL2 molecules to protect to prevent that. And as soon as it happens, they uh, interact with PD-1, and that's how the anti-tumor immune response starts to dysfunction. How can we inhibit t the uh, T lymphocyte blocking to protect it against immune suppression? We need to block this pathological way of PD-1. We can use that with uh, MHS, or we can block 
the receptor at the activated lymphocyte, or we can uh, block PDL1 or PDL2 at the tumor cell. Today, we have the uh, ways to block them, uh, to block PDL1, whereas PDL2 remains released. That's a very simplified response to protect human body against uh, this type of immune response. There are a lot of immune competent cells that uh, interact here and in particular work with PDL1 and PDL2 which are complete which are extremely uh, complex molecules. But when we take uh, T helpers, regulators, uh, dendrite, dendritic cells, they all can regulate the uh, anti-tumor effect of T lymphocytes. One, once again, what can affect the effectiveness of immune response and immune therapy by anti-PDH1 uh, and PDH2? First, the um, so-called mutation load. We are used to say that driver mutations are a good thing, but here it's quite the opposite. The more various mutations we have, the more is the mutation workload, the better is the immune response. It turned out that uh, lung cancer takes uh, the first place in this rating across all malignant uh, lesions. Here, um, I show you the uh, different types of cancers and as uh, CLC and uh, uh, SCLC, and with them, this effect is especially profound. Here at the end, we have non smokers, uh, lung uh, cells. For non smokers, it's uh, usually they have uh, usually a lot of somatic driver mutations. So, as the result, the response to PDL therapy was significantly higher with smokers compared to non smokers. Whereas the length and expressions of response correlated to, to the um, mutation uh, load, and they had the direct correlation between each other. What also um, impacts on the immune uh, response? The uh, antigens that induce immune response to tumor. That's the principle that underlies combined ray therapy and anti pdl one and anti pdl 2 therapy. When there is uh, no apoptosis, then uh, there is no immune response to. Expression of PDL1, as we've learned from the previous uh, presentation, also plays a major role in immune response because that's the main. The expression of PDL1 is the main way to evade immune response. The graph to the left shows the uh, better survival right with patients who do not have this type of expression irrelevant to the stage of uh, NSCLC. The first uh, study um, for phase one with the nivolumab for anti-PDN, um, this type of expression is uh, related to the immune infiltration and the type of cancer. To date, we differentiate the expression of PDL1 for tumor and for immune cells. And in the red colors, in the red color, you highlighted with the red color, you can see the correlation between those two for NSCLC. So, as far as expression of PDL1 and TIL 
is concerned, we can split all NC and SCLC types into four groups. We have PDL1 only for the first type. We have PDL1 for tumor cells, which is quite rare. We have PDL1 for lymphocytes. And finally, we have uh, PDL1 both at tumor cells and at lymphocytes. What uh, else can we use to select the patients for immune therapy? Because obviously, this type of therapy cannot work all for everybody. Family history matters a lot here. We studied this um, for solid tumors, and the uh, trial included over 14,000 patients. You can see how high are the figures. And uh, here we can expect positive response to the immune therapy. What are the prerequisites for anti-PDN1 for NLCLC? There are certain prerequisites. Let's have a look at them. NTPD-1 monoclonal antibodies in the therapy of the NSCLC, the receptor PDL1 is expressed on the activated T lymphocytes. We know the survival curves, uh, we know the uh, watershed, uh, waterfall diagrams as to effectiveness of immunotherapy. We should get used to the new diagrams. The first trials showed these diagrams, the first one, its response to immunotherapy. Every line, horizontal line chart, it is one patient. Uh, the circle, uh, it's uh, the time before response, uh, the treatment started, and we have the objective response. Then the duration of the response during the treatment shift to the red color. This is a cessation of the therapy, but response remains for a long time. Patient is not relapsed, is not treated, but still responsive. I like the diagram, OK diagram. Uh, they uh, they are suitable for small trials. Uh, so these uh, are spider web diagram. Every 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 spider is uh, there one patient. The sizes of the the size of tumor is evaluated before treatment. If it goes up, uh, the tumor is increasing. Started. Treated, treatment, evaluated, horizontal line. The tumor is not enlarged, uh, down, reduced. During immunotherapy, during the first phase, quite frequently we register either, either, either relapse or new lesions. A classical chemotherapist may say, we should stop treatment, but a specific feature of the immune therapy, uh, it requires longer time for response because patients uh, at the initial phase with relapse can be responsive later on and preserve this effect. That's why we have the specific evaluation of the objective evaluation, uh, specific uh, objective evaluation on the immune therapy. We have the term pseudoprogression. For example, this lesion uh, that contains from immunocompetent uh, cells and tumor cells, in classical response, uh, the tumor cells die uh, the lesions reduced in relapse, uh, vice versa, the number of tumor cells is increasing. But during the immune response, uh, the lesion may be increased due to lymphoid infiltration. And this response, this phenomenon has been described, but morphologically the substrate I can say contains immunocompetent cells, and then we have the response and the shrinking of the tumor. Nivolumab, anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibody, well studied in NSCLC, the first phase, very long survival rate, 18%. Uh, it's 60 months, five years. 
uh, it's uh, the second phase. Uh, it's uh, uh, very long. 27% de uh, patient demonstrated long survival rate and two randomized studies of the third phase nivolumab compare versus docetaxel as uh, the second light therapy of the non-small cell. Uh, the squamous cell nivolumab, uh, the survival rate and non squamous cell, non-small cell lung cancer. The second line therapy, 51% survival rate for one year. It's a long-lasting effect. What we faced uh, with the fact that these curves, uh, they uh, become apart quite late. After three or six or seven or eight months. That's why the experts are discussed now, discussing now that selecting uh, patients for this type of immunotherapy, we should exclude patients uh, that may be rapidly relapsed. A few words about nivolumab versus doxetaxel, the second line of therapy non uh, squamous cell, non small cell uh, lung cancer. Its survival rate, disease free survival rate, at some point, uh, nivolumab uh, yields uh, worse than doxetaxel, but uh, then, so the, uh, after a certain time, everything everything is in place. A subgroup analysis, uh, depending of expression, PDL1 demonstrated uh, that benefit uh, was in both with expression PDL1 on tumor cells. More benefits when we had cut off 0.5% and cut off 0.10%, uh, no difference. I would select 5% borderline, but for no volume up, uh, as to expression PDL1 are uh, on the tumor cells not required. Immunocompetent cells were not evaluated. Then, uh, squamous cell. Lung cancer. The second, the similar curves, disease-free survival rate. Uh, the advantage appears a bit later. We have the advantage of nivolumab as to the prolonging life. Subgroup analysis depending on the expression of PDL1. Unlike non-squamous cell. No squamous uh, nivolumab, nivolumab uh, win doxetat cell in all subgroups. We have the advantages. It's subgroup analysis, upper part overall survival, bottom part a survival free, disease free survival, the ratio of risks, black, black circles nivolumab, red doxetat cell. We can see that if we don't non squamous cell, if there is no expression, there are no benefits uh, of nivolumab. With, if we have expression, the benefits are obvious. In squamous cells, cancer, all patients benefit. Despite this data, PDL1, 2 to, dis to prescribe nivolumab, uh, there is no need to uh, identify expression PDL1. Next, Pembra Lizumarb anti PD1, PDL1 monoclonal antibody, immunoglobulin G4, short C fragment, there is no cytotoxicity. Typ typical diagram, the first study. Uh, the reduction of the control lesions. For pembrolizumab, 
We have a different evaluation scale over the evaluation of PDL1 expression. Uh, it's a non small cell cancer divided into three groups. We evaluate PDL expression only on tumor cells less than 1%, negative, from 1 to 49 and more than 50 percent points of uh, uh, tumor cells expressed this molecule. Let's look at this study, a large study, the second and the third phase, pembrolizumab versus doxetax cell of a therapy of non-small cells, cells like cancer, uh, 1,000 patients enrolled. These patients that were enrolled with the expression of PDL1 from 1%, uh, there is benefit, but cut off point 50% of tumor cells. These patients in these tumor cells uh, get maximum benefit from pembrolizumab. Uh, the medication, the drug was, registr uh, was registered after the expression of PDL1 on tumor cells. Uh, and uh, there is uh, the benefit if the tumor cells express PDL1 in more than 50% ligand of PDL1. In New Angle Journal of Medicine, uh, this meta analysis, we can see. Uh, survival, disease-free survival, considerable advantages of Pembrolizumab. They are registered in both groups, in treated patients and non-treated previously patients. Uh, here we can have the question: question, what kind of uh, what uh, kind of medication to use as a first line? As to the activated mutation patient, nivolumab and pembrolizumab, uh, the trial shows uh, that if uh, the patients have GFR mutations acti activation, they don't have the benefit uh, because. There is no this mutation load. Uh, they have only a driver, driver mutation. Whether or not this strategy is safe, uh, we do face autoimmune reactions and immune-related uh, toxicity, hepatitis, elevation of transaminase, infusion reaction, endocrinopathia, thyroiditis, or uh, uh, hypophysitis and uh, adrenal gland insufficiency. Very severe complication is pneumonia. Less studied anti-PD-L1 monoclonal uh, antibodies in a therapy of non-small cells lung cancer. I uh, thought that this strategy will be worse uh, because uh, if we block the ligand PDL1 on the activated lymphocyte. We block uh, the interaction of this receptor with both the molecule PDL1 and PDL2. But it turned out uh, that the molecule PDL2 plays the most important role in the development of immunotolerance and the blockade of this signal pathway that is involved in immune homeostasis increases uh, the risk of the autoimmune reactions that we faced during our clinical trials. The strategy of PDL1 molecule was developed uh, on the tumor cell. We blocked the inhibiting signal between the T lymphocyte and the tumor cell. Uh, this pathway PD1, PD, PDL2, uh, there is uh, the molecule B7 that interact with the ligand PDL1. These pathways, uh, they minimize, minimize the influence on the immune homeostasis, and we can prevent the development of the immune reactions. Let's look at the practical results. Uh, PDL1 molecule, atezolizumab versus doxetaxel, the second, third line therapy of non-small cells, uh, lung cancer. PDL, uh, Anti-PDL1 uh, showed benefit in all the population. 
the benefits were registered regardless of the histology in non-squamous and squamous cell. Effectiveness of the drug depends on the expression of PDL1 on uh, tumor cells and lymphocyte infiltrating cells. PDL1 uh, was detected not only on the tumor cells but on the lymphocyte cells as well. If there is no expression, we, you can see what kind of survival rates we have. So we can use the cetaxel for this patient with ease. Irrelevant to the expression rate, uh, there is a special system of rating for there to get one, two, three score. So for all types of patients with one, two, and three rates, if there is at least any type of expression, anti-PDL1 therapy was uh, more effective compared to standard immune therapy. That's how it looks like for these types of cells. The expression was uh, related to the gene signaturing. Gene signaturing was associated with the expression of PDL1 for immune cells, and gene signature was associated with the gains in uh, general survival rate with the uh, dozolizumab. We still have a number of open questions and uh, new areas of studies for the antibodies here. The previous speaker has already mentioned the problem, the lack of uh, integrated system to uh, detect the PDL1 for immune cells. Each producer has its own diagnosis. For nivolumab, uh, you can see the margins here. It's uh, 1%, 5%, 2% .5 for um, non squamous cell uh, cancers. For other types of uh, indications, we have other types of uh, margins. For atezolumab, we uh, evaluate all sorts of uh, cells, they have their own scales. And for avilumab and dorvolumab that are also under clinical investigations, they also have uh, different uh, evaluation scales, but only with tumor cells. So the question, will they be included in the first line of therapy, at least for certain patients that we can select by expression or gene signature. Like five years ago, I got the memorandum on earlier end of uh, pembrolizumab studies. Pembrolizumab uh, requires expression selection of patients they took uh, patients with selection with expressions of over 50 percent five days ago this uh, study was ended by independent uh, board because uh, pentralism up showed much efficiency for special selected patients uh, in the first line of therapy all patients uh, were transferred to pembrolizumab, and we expect to get publications and report on the uh, use. For NSCLC, by contrast to melanoma, the combination of anti-PDL1 and anti-CTLA4 can be uh, useful. We compare different types of medications here, but the efficiency dependent on mutation load, smoking uh, experience, and so on. That's the potential uh, combination of anti-PD-L1 and targeted therapy, because there are patients who have both 
uh, mutations of AGFR and uh, better expressions of PDL1. So combined strategies may work well for them. We can also combine anti PDL1 and uh, chemotherapies because uh, this uh, can help for better recognition of tumor cells and as the result a more effective elimination after activation of pdl1 with monoclonal bodies so we uh, can observe a progress in survival rate of patients with non squamous cell cancers PDL1, anti PDN, and anti PDL1 are well studied. They are approved. These uh, indications were approved, including nivolumab and pembrolizumab for PDL1 positive um, NSCLC in the United States, only monotherapy. By anti PD1, PDL1 showed the progress uh, compared to docetaxel, uh, irrelevant to histology for first line of treatment with the cancer patients. Uh, this uh, slide shows the uh, advances in clinical cancer. Uh, the immune therapy was called a breakthrough and one of the most impressive advances in oncology in recent years.